any existing global law partners. We are, I think, the most uh, international U.S. legal program. Let me be clear about that. There are U.S. law schools that have huge LLM programs. Uh, NYU has 750 or so students a year in their LLM program, or the University of Southern California, fine uh, but very expensive private institution has uh, more than 200. Uh, our LLM programs have 15. But a third of every student who comes to the University of Arizona, to the College of Law, is from outside of the U.S. And in U.S. and national terms, students in a typical year, even though our class is small, will come from 25 or 26 different U.S. states. Of the people who come from around the world, uh, we've had, in any given year, we'll have students from pretty much every continent. Uh, you know, India, China, we'll have students from across Africa, Latin America, uh, and uh, sometimes they come through existing global partnerships, but often they're students uh, who come from a very, very wide range, not only of uh, countries, but of educational institutions. So these are the varieties of degrees, uh, all of which are open to students uh, from outside of the U.S. So I will focus on the JD Advanced Admissions Program. Uh, under the American Bar Association rules that regulate U.S. law schools, uh, we are allowed to give up to one year of credit for legal study uh, around the world. Uh, other law schools can do this, and about 40 U.S. law schools have followed us, but we were the leader in this regard. Uh, that means that you can come, and if it, whether your studies are in a civil or a common law jurisdiction, and absolutely whether they're undergraduate, a typical LLB, uh, or graduate study, uh, you can get a JD in two years rather than what is required for U.S. students, which is three years. Uh, with a JD, you can sit for any U.S. bar, and you will have the entire foundational a U.S. Uh, legal studies program along with other U.S. students, and we think that gives some real advantages. As I mentioned, we do have two uh, LLM programs and have had them for uh, well over a decade. Um, each program gets uh, five to ten students, so a total of 15, no more than 20. Uh, one is in international economic law. We have an affiliated research center around that. Um, the leaders of that program are Professor uh, David Gant and Professor Sorio Puig. Uh, Sorio is a Mexican-trained uh, uh, lawyer. David is a leader in uh, bilateral relations and trade. There's a larger faculty, but they're at the head of that program. We also have an LLM in Indigenous Peoples Law and Policy. Indeed, we have the leading program in the world, I believe, in that area. Uh, and they do work, research, and education, both in uh, domestic U.S. law, but with a heavy uh, emphasis on uh, international uh, law as well. We do have a Master's of Legal Studies program uh, for non-lawyers, in other words, people who are not trying to be licensed either in their home country or in the U.S., but for whom intensive legal study will advance their legal career. And then we are the first university in the United States to have a Bachelor of Arts in Law. This is not a pre-law degree. It is not legal studies. Uh, we train students in contracts, torts, property procedure, legal writing and research. And the idea is to train people to work in legal and regulated environments, uh, but without the U.S. licensure. Uh, and it's been a very popular program. It's been around for only five semesters, and we have more than 450 people in that program here in Tucson and another 174 in a dual degree program in Qingdao, uh, China, uh, also studying for that degree. So again, let me go back to the JD program, and please let me repeat the encouragement that if you have a question along the way or this isn't clear, to, to let me know. So the advanced JD admissions program uh, allows you to earn the JD in two years, and it's not a JD with a star note. It's not a JD for foreign lawyers. It's the JD. You just get the year of credit if you've studied law elsewhere. Uh, and uh, now many of those students do and can stay for an additional half year or stay for a full three years. Some do that to be on Law Journal. Some do it to get a master's degree along with a JD. 
but you have the option as an international lawyer coming to the U.S. that U.S. lawyers don't, no matter what their degrees are trading, which is to get the JD uh, in two years. Uh, the JD means you can take any bar exam. You're not limited to New York or Wisconsin, to the handful of U.S. states that allow a foreign lawyer, a non-U.S. lawyer, with an LLM to sit for the bar. And by the way, the JD gives you a much more solid foundation. So in terms of passing the U.S. bar and in terms of practicing, whether in an international setting, in a domestic setting, or here in the U.S., it's a far more recognized degree. Our students who've been in that program uh, have been getting uh, not LLM favored jobs, but regular jobs that any U.S. JD uh, would get with firms and agencies. There is no LSAT required for the international admissions advance program, the advanced admissions program. Uh, we do look for very strong uh, English language uh, skills, uh, but we are not required to and therefore do not use the LSAT. We do not find it to be uh, uh, particularly useful. And then as I, uh, I think I mentioned, 20 to 25 percent of every one of our entering classes now for some years uh, has been from outside the U.S. So that means when you're in small sections in legal writing, in other words, you're, as an international student, you're there with a, a, a large group of other international students. The picture on the screen is from a, uh, a U of A uh, American football game uh, a couple of years ago. I don't mean to diminish the value of LLM. I understand that many of you are interested in U.S. LLM programs. Uh, you should be very attentive to the nature of those programs. There are many excellent LLM programs. I would encourage you to look at those which integrate international students fully into the JD classes and curriculum rather than teaching LLM students separately. I think one of the major opportunities in doing an LLM is to build professional relationships with U.S. students and vice versa for U.S. students to get to know uh, lawyers from uh, other countries and that opens up both job and professional prospects uh, down the road. Uh, for us, the uh, LLM, first of all, is very competitively priced and by the way, so is the JD. The tuition for non-residents of Arizona, because we're a state school, it's a little lower for residents, uh, but it's uh, for non-residents is 29,000 U.S. dollars a year. I don't mean to diminish the point that that is a lot of money, but it's half of what many other top-tier U.S. law schools charge for tuition, and it's half of what many U.S. law schools charge for LLM tuition. So. Uh, you know, a USC or a Columbia that charges in the mid 50s US dollars, 55, 54, 58 thousand dollars a year. My point is, we are so aggressive with tuition so that the JD is a real option. And I understand it's a second year of living expenses. On the other hand, uh, Tucson is both a lovely and a relatively affordable place to. Uh, to live. Our LLM programs, uh, first is International Economic Law and Policy. It's a one-year, a 30-unit program. It is an in-depth focus on international trade law, investment, commercial, and business law. Uh, you can take the bar exam in a handful of U.S. states. Uh, so people do that, and it's a, it's a, have a more traditional path for international lawyers. And if you are focused in that area of, of expertise, it can be very uh, valuable. Because the program is small, not only do we fully integrate our LLM students with the JD program, uh, but we get to know them uh, incredibly well and mentor people uh, individually. Uh, again, we have high U.S., uh, high English language requirements uh, for those programs. For the, uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to jump over one. So we do have a, a LLM in uh, Indigenous Peoples Law and Policy uh, as well. Uh, that is a program that focuses on human rights, indigenous development, comparative indigenous international law. There are clinical opportunities uh, with both of these programs as well. I mentioned the MLS, the Masters of Legal Studies. That can be for lawyers or non-lawyers. Uh, the LLM is only for people with a law degree, whether it's a, uh, an LLB, uh, or a, a JD or a prior master's degree. Now, the MLS is not area specific. The idea there is to enhance career paths so we can build uh, content and classes around individual 
uh, goals. Uh, a number of people have done that in the area of trade and business law, but so have people done it in environmental law, uh, in corporate compliance, environmental compliance, in education, in any numbers of areas. And we have about 50 students, five zero students currently doing uh, the Masters of Legal Studies. I mentioned the Bachelor of Arts in Law. I don't know where most of you are in your uh, educational pathways. Uh, this is quite an extraordinary program. Uh, we are unique in the U.S. in having it, and as I mentioned, it is intended to train people to work in legal and regulated environments. So if you wanted a background in U.S. law but didn't plan to sit for a U.S. bar, you weren't interested in and didn't care about being a member of a U.S. bar, then either the MLS in a year or the, if depending on where you are in your educational progression, the Bachelor of Arts uh, would open those opportunities. You might have noticed as well that the English language requirements for the MLS and the Bachelor of Arts are lower than they are for the JD uh, or the LLM uh, program. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the University of Arizona, about the college, and about uh, Tucson. Uh, while the law school is small, and I have emphasized that, we are not at a small university. There are more than 34,000 students here. We're at AAU University. What does that mean? Uh, there are a handful of universities in the U.S. Uh, whose research profile is sufficiently high. Uh, and so this is a very small uh, organization of elite schools. Uh, that have a heavy uh, research emphasis along with their educational program. Uh, we're very strong as a university uh, in environmental research in the sciences. Uh, the University of Arizona was the principal uh, actor in setting off a, a, a rocket that's uh, going to an asteroid on a multi-year mission, uh, almost a billion dollar mission. That rocket took off a couple of months ago. Uh, to the asteroid to Bennu, it's called Osiris-Rex, just extraordinary things in sciences and optics and geology. Some of that interacts quite directly with the law school. We do a lot of work in law and technology. Uh, we have a global mining law program, uh, which is uh, new but has received a lot of interest from students who work in the area of natural resources, people who work on issues of privacy, of big data, uh, people who are doing work in business and startup and innovation and entrepreneurship. We have a close partnership uh, with the Eller College of Management, our business school, which is right next door uh, to the law school, and whose dean, by the way, uh, grew up and was trained in uh, Brazil. In terms of the College of Law, I've mentioned that we're in the, the you know elite tier of U.S. law schools. Uh, we were founded in 1915. Uh, it's, we're, we're very proud of being a small law school at a major research university. And w w we're proud of it because it means we get to know every student who comes here well. Uh, if there are 126 or 135 uh, uh, JD students and 15 or 18 LLM students uh, and uh, several dozen MLS students, uh, and then the, the BA students are taught separately from the graduate students. It means we really know each and every person and what they want to uh, achieve. Uh, the, uh, we have a broad program. Uh, we believe we're training people to practice everywhere and practice anything. Of course we have these areas of expertise where we're highly uh, noted, but I think it's important for you to choose a law school in the U.S. if you're coming that has a broad foundation because even if you have an established practice and area of interest, you may find when you come that there is some other or related area that you want to study. And if you go to a law school because of one professor or one program, uh, you may not have that breadth. Um, we've been small for our whole history. So even though we're more than 100 years old, we only have uh, just over 7,000 alumni, but they are not only in all 50 U.S. states, but in over uh, 40 uh, countries. And so we have been global for a very long time. The, uh, some of that is not surprising. Uh, Tucson, Arizona is on the border with Mexico. Uh, we're on the west uh, uh, coast, you know, one state away from the ocean. Uh, California is the only thing between us and uh, the Pacific. Uh, your image of Arizona might be as a hot, dry desert state. That's not particularly accurate. We are a state with basin and range, so mountains and valleys and deserts. Uh, Tucson is uh, about uh, 90 kilometers north of the border with Mexico. It's very easy to go across the border uh, into Mexico. It's a very diverse state and city. Um, 
a very large uh, Hispanic and Native American uh, population. As I've mentioned, a lot of international students or a, a large global population. We have a fabulous uh, urban center. It's about a million people in the Tucson metropolitan area, about seven million in the state of Arizona as a whole. What that means is there's tons of mountains and deserts, the Grand Canyon, beautiful natural areas, but then there are also these uh, uh, vibrant uh, cities. And I've given you a few images uh, on the screen of the desert, the mountains above Tucson, uh, and uh, the downtown. Here's a couple images of the university, which sits uh, near the heart of the city. Uh, one of these buildings is the oldest building on campus. It's called Old Main. We have a large uh, grass area that runs through the center of campus, and then the brick buildings is sort of the typical uh, uh, architecture. There's some more modern buildings as well. And uh, here's a final image, and I would welcome any questions you have? So if and there is uh, any questions, please, uh, re you can raise your hands or you can just type it uh, into the question uh, panel, you know, so that's something that you can do. Uh, uh, so Dean, like some of the questions that we have received for the last presentation, uh, you can you can just uh, please uh, write the questions uh, into the question panel anytime. So one key question is that well, what would be the cost of, uh, uh, you know, like including the, including the, uh, the tuition and the living expense? For a, for, a, for a program. So this was a question that we have received like most of the time whenever we host this program. Uh, this is one of the very common questions that we receive. Uh, so do, can, can you let us know like what would be the cost specific to the James E. Rogers College of Law uh, you know, for doing a two-year uh, JD program, the tuition plus living expense? Yes, so, uh, so the cost, the tuition is 29,000 US dollars a year for each year. Uh, and the living expenses, while it varies, we estimate around eighteen thousand uh, uh, dollars a year uh, for living expenses. But um, you know, some people choose to live on campus. Uh, some people choose to live in apartments or in the area. There are a lot of um, uh, there are a lot of housing options. Uh, let me emphasize again that we are unlike other states. We don't create a huge um, gap or barrier between the cost for U.S. Arizona residents who are a minority of our students, but still we are the University of Arizona, a public institution. So an in-state student, a student who grew up in Arizona, would pay $24,500 a year tuition. And a, and a student from outside of Arizona, whether they are from India or Indiana, from Colorado or from China, would pay $29,000. Uh, so not a huge gap uh, between those. Again, as I mentioned before, if you compare that to the cost of LLM or JD programs at other U.S. law schools, private or public, uh, I think you'll find that we are incredibly uh, competitive. We believe in access and we want to create the most diverse and interesting uh, student body we can. And we're also sensitive that this is a lot of money and we want to create pathways to practice. Okay, excellent. So, uh, uh, you know, there, there are of, uh, uh, you know, at least over here. So, if any any of uh, you want to ask any specific questions, because we have the dean himself, you know, I mean, he, uh, uh, so it's 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 quite good that uh, he's he's there with us. So, if there is any question, then he would be the right person to answer it. So, we have uh, a Lavanya over here with a question. So, I can just uh, let me just open that. So. Uh, uh, do you have, does Arizona Law School uh, specialize in the field of corporate law as an LLM program? So is corporate law one of the specializations that has been offered at Arizona? So that's the question. Yeah, so that's a great question. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, we have an LLM in international economic law, which includes corporate and business law, trade, intellectual property, investment law, entrepreneurship. Um, we have a domestic U.S. corporate law curriculum, so many students come here to be trained in corporate law. That's a very typical area of practice. And so, for example, on our corporate law faculty, uh, we include uh, Professor Bob Mundheim, who teaches every spring a class in corporate governance, where he brings in Fortune 500 general counsel uh, to do roundtables uh, with the public and then specially with his own uh, class. 
Um, so we have a strong corporate law program. I would say our focus and emphasis is on the creation and growth of uh, companies, uh, on entrepreneurship, on innovation, uh, and not primarily on most of our graduates uh, are not focused on uh, massive uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies for their active practice. I mean, some go to New York to the big firms. We've had three or four students go to Sherman and Sterling in the last few years uh, in New York, and some go to Chicago and Los Angeles uh, to do uh, large corporate practice. But I would say, since our students go all over the place, their corporate law that they work on is often in the creation, nurturing, and growth of both new and mid-sized companies. Um, uh, but we teach, you know, mergers and acquisitions, a full range of securities laws, a full range of tax classes. All of our tax classes are, including corporate tax, are taught in conjunction with the business school. So you're sitting there with business and law students. And so I, uh, uh, that is the focus of our program. We do not have a separate LLM in corporate law. So it would, it would come under the LLM in international economic law and then just do a corporate law focus. Uh, we uh, have uh, frequently um, been asked about is uh, about the scholarship program. Uh, that's again a question that regularly comes up. So uh, is there any scholarship uh, available to the to the potential law students like you know what are the op what are the opportunities for scholarship available in the LLM program as well as in the in the JD program is there any scholarship options available Yes absolutely we do not have a, a substantial number of scholarship dollars uh, so our strategy has been keep the real tuition down so you could look at a U.S. law school that has a fifty-five or fifty-eight thousand dollar tuition, and they offer you a ten thousand dollar scholarship, and that's a net tuition of forty-eight thousand dollars. And you could look at us, and we might offer you a two thousand dollar scholarship, which would make the net tuition twenty-seven thousand dollars. But if you said school number one is giving me a much bigger scholarship, I don't think you're looking at this in the right way. So the answer is yes. We are open to and and allow. Uh, international students to apply uh, for scholarship funds, but with both U.S. and international students, our fundamental approach is to make sure that the tuition is kept uh, at a decent level uh, and people come out without the massive uh, debt that they uh, do at uh, some other U.S. Uh, law programs. Uh, a third question, which is again an FAQ question, which uh, we have encountered last time also in, in yesterday's webinar as well, uh, is the uh, is the uh, the qualification, right, uh, uh, as in the mark level or the range of uh, of marks which uh, one is expected as an undergraduate uh, uh, law student. So, how much uh, do you think is the is the um, is the is the amount? Uh, I mean, the mark which which typically should be uh, should a person be aiming at? Uh, um, you know, that's another question which uh, was frequently asked. Well, it's a great question. So it's interesting here to contrast uh, the LLM and international JD students from the U.S. students. With the U.S. students, we are somewhat constrained uh, because it is important to all of our community, to our employers, alumni, that we remain an absolutely top-ranked school. The reason so many employers come, <coughs> excuse me, come to Arizona or welcome Arizona students uh, in their in, in their agencies, in their companies, is because uh, we have been so strong for so long. The drivers on rankings in the U.S. are uh, LSAT scores and grades, and so uh, we're very, very picky. We have somewhat more flexibility with international JD students and with LLM students. Now let me be clear, we're still picky. If we admit you, we admit you because we are confident that you can succeed and we can champion you in the market and, and, and that you will make good use of the degree, that if you're going to sit for the bar, you will pass the bar. Uh, these are all very important things. But we can look at individualized programs. Uh, it's actually quite difficult to compare the quality 
of undergraduate or master's programs around the world. And since we take students in a typical year, as I mentioned before, from 25 or 26 different countries and often from 70 or 80, uh, you know, in, in one class of 126 students, people will come from 70 or 80 or 90 different academic institutions uh, all over the place. That means we need to spend a lot of time, and we do, reviewing individual transcripts. So there isn't a magic answer to that question. We don't need people to have been the, the number one student in their class. There isn't a, a grade cutoff for either the LLM or the JD program because it matters enormously where someone went and also if they've worked or practiced where they are in their professional and educational pathway. We appreciate and respect greatly if people have spent uh, some time uh, in in work or practice, and that it's that experience which leads them to believe that diversifying their educational background uh, will uh, ad ad advance them. Um, it, some students who want to take a standardized test, which can give us uh, more information, uh, we'd encourage people to take the graduate record exam, and not the LSAT. If you take the LSAT, even as an international student, uh, we have to report it. So if you do not do extremely well, that will foreclose our opportunity, at least for the JD program, uh, of uh, offering admission. If you've taken the LSAT, that's fine. We want to know it. We, indeed, we have to know it, and it will be reported to us. Uh, and we're not ranked based on the LSAT scores for the LLM program. Uh, but but the, you know, I, the bottom line in all of this is there isn't a magic cutoff. We're open to looking at people's educational and professional pathways. We have more flexibility with our international applicants and for both the JD and the LLM program. But we look for people with strong records of success. This is a, this is a, a serious and competitive program. Thanks so much, Dean. So uh, another question that uh, again is a, is a is an FAQ question, which we always get for every every uh, presentation and for all the webinars, is that uh, what happens after we finish the JD? Because uh, I need to point this out, having hosted uh, a couple of uh, uh, you know webinars for for uh, multiple law schools, is that uh, since this is a two-year JD program. Uh, I am presuming that uh, people might be eligible to uh, write the bar exam in any state in the U.S., right? If I'm not any, mistaken, is that... Oh, any state. Any that's, state. The, that's the essential point. Any state at all. Uh, by the way, the, there's a movement in the U.S. towards a, essentially a national bar exam. It's called the Uniform Bar Exam. So 25 states, including New York, now allow people to sit for the same exam and you take it once and if your score is strong enough each state has its own cut score, a, a, a pass score. But you, Arizona was one of the first states in that movement and so Arizona, Colorado, Washington, New York, Alabama, you know a whole bunch of states you can see online I can send a link if you search for uniform bar exam uh, in a web search uh, you would see all those states, and uh, that's very, very important. And, 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 and Vishnu, your point is even more essential. The LLM opens up three or four or five states at most. The JD, right. opens, up, the JD opens up 50 states in the District of Columbia. It is the same degree, the identical degree that U.S. students get, and the, the, the entry point for all the U.S. bar exams is a JD from an accredited U.S. law school. So that's that's quite interesting. So, uh, so is it is, is it like uh, is there any uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the JD program or when the uh, when the candidates are in their final year uh, in many countries, typically in India and as well as in African countries as well, there is a lot of law firms which uh, you know presents themselves before right. the final year law students. Uh, right. Sometimes they get recruited directly. So yep. Does such a practice exist in, uh, in, in Arizona University School of Law as well? Yeah, of course. Uh, we have a career development office with five uh, uh, full-time uh, employees. We have employers coming all the time. So, for example, this week uh, is our, um, it's called the Sonoran Desert Career Fair. It's public interest organizations uh, here, uh, in, in not just in Arizona, but throughout the West, uh, that interview um, uh, both in Tucson and in Phoenix. 
and um, I, there, I, I, what I know, I don't even have the total count of employers. I know there were 300 student interviews uh, this Thursday with public interest employers here in Tucson. I think there's another 100 plus uh, interviews the following day uh, for students uh, in Phoenix. We also have, um, uh, I'm sorry for the thing that gets appearing on screen, we also have uh, private employers. We've just completed the season when most private law firms uh, come to uh, Tucson to interview, but we also do what we call on-campus interviewing, although technically it's not on campus, in Phoenix, in Los Angeles, uh, in Denver. Uh, if the demand is there on the part of our students, we will organize with local firms in different cities uh, to um, uh, to do interviewing in those cities. In other words, we'll, we'll take a group of students to Los Angeles and say to Los Angeles firms, of course you're welcome to come to Tucson and interview, but we have enough students uh, that we will bring them there and make it easy for the firm. They can send their lawyers or the recruiters uh, to a local hotel. Uh, we also, you know, I describe our students coming typically from 25 states and 25 countries and so the, our students are interested in practicing everywhere. We have a, in a typical year, five to ten students, almost ten percent of the class will go back to Washington DC. That's a very popular location. So our career office is set up to help students get in front of and connect with employers in every state and by the way in international placements too. Both our US and our international students are increasingly uh, seeking placements uh, internationally, not necessarily in their home country and we have uh, set up our career office to support that as well. I can get you and you can distribute to everyone um, an actual number of firms and agencies and employers that interview either on campus or what one of our uh, regional uh, uh, interviewing forums. I, but it's it's been great and actually the number has been going up in recent years. One of the puzzles for us is that because we're a small school, uh, employers from some of the bigger cities say we're, we're happy to talk with uh, graduates of your school. We know some, there's some in the firm or agency, they're excellent, uh, but we won't send necessarily an interviewer there if there are only five students interested in practicing, uh, say in Chicago, uh, but we'll welcome resumes and then we assist in opening up those opportunities. Thank you very much, Dean. So, uh, it's uh, if anyone has any questions, so now's your chance to ask him. So, he's, uh, he's, uh, uh, you, can, you can just type your questions over here in the in the question bar. So, if at all you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, yeah. So, um, I don't think anyone has raised their hands. Uh, uh, you know, so the the the, 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 the I don't think there are any further questions. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Dean Miller, for joining today, and uh, it is it's been very very uh, informative session. So uh, if there are any handouts or anything that you'd like to share, then please do let us know. We can we can definitely email it across. And this uniform bar exam has been a very uh, interesting point. I think not only to the attendees, to me personally as well. So it's it's a it's a new information. So it is it 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 it, it, it was quite quite enlightening. Uh, so if uh, if there is no further question, then we can we can end this uh, webinar. Unless you want to add something more to to to, to the. No, I just I appreciate people taking the time. Um, I look forward to hearing uh, something about your backgrounds and where you're from. Uh, if you or someone else you know has additional questions, part of being a small law school, a big university is. Uh, you know, you, you have the dean on the line, not an admissions officer, because it's very important to me to be able to describe the program, uh, and we build these personal relationships with people. And so, if folks have a follow-up question, uh, I hope they will feel free to uh, uh, to let me know. Is there any place where, in case if they want to reach out to, like, is uh, like where do they reach out to? Is there like any, uh, do they reach out to you, or is there an admissions office, or where exactly? Is the, if that yeah. contact can be shared on screen, then that would be much uh, helpful for uh, many of the attendees. Uh, so it's a great point. I don't have a slide with the contact, but let me send it to you to send to everyone. First, people can absolutely reach out to me and just do a search for uh, University of Arizona and the College of Law. 
Uh, my name is Mark Miller. Mark is with a C. Dean Miller, it's very easy to find. Carrie Lee Cluck, C-L-U-C-K, is our head of admissions generally. Uh, the, uh, and Christina Castaneda, uh, C-A-S-T-A-N-E-D-A, -E Castaneda, is head of international admissions. So uh, I'm happy to share the more detailed contact information. I just don't have it handy. I think Dean Miller is much more easy, easier yes. to find, I suppose. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And people can reach out to me directly. I mean, for the same reason that I'm here on the webinar this morning, uh, it's very, very important to us to find and build the right group of students across these programs. And I think if people sat down with our students or faculty or staff, one of the really striking things, but you have to take my word for it now in the webinar, but if you were here talking with people, one of the striking things is uh, how friendly and supportive and engaging the setting is. And I really believe that we uh, offer a, a setting which is engaging and supportive in a way that is not like other fine uh, US law schools, but to experience that, you'll have to come. Thank you so much, Dean. Thank you very much for this, uh, for taking the time of uh, that to so early in the morning to to present the law school and and the various programs. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you all. Bye.